Each year it seems as though more and more urban interface incidents unfold, and each year we learn from these experiences. Last year the 7,500 acre waterfall fire, which destroyed multiple structures, was labeled by local newspapers as the worst fire in Carson City, Nevada's history. Typical of an urban interface incident, 15 different entities had personnel on that fire. The Waterfall Fire Accident Investigation Report is now available on the Nevada Division of Forestry's website. The lessons learned from this fire are of value to any area that faces multi-jurisdictional, multi-agency, emerging fires in an urban interface. We encourage you to read it and share it with your local cooperators in your preseason meeting. The time will come when every local unit will have to face their own waterfall fire, the worst fire in their history. How well they're prepared for it will depend on your efforts before it starts. Now let's go back to the field and hear from some firefighters that were on that fire. Uh, on the waterfall incident, we had a fairly significant burnover type incident uh, up in a cul-de-sac at the top of a subdivision. And uh, fortunately, nobody was injured. We did lose some equipment, but it actually went well. We got everybody out okay. The next day, we had the fire, the waterfall fire, run down on two more subdivisions, Timberline and Lakeview. Uh, Timberline, we lost a few structures, um, but it was a very safe operation. Lakeview, we didn't lose any structures, and I think it's due to some of the lessons we learned the previous day. Um, one of the big ones was traffic and traffic patterns. And uh, what I tried to do, I was ops on the fire, is up in the Lakeview subdivision, as part of our briefing of all resources coming in, we made it very clear that we maintained one clear lane on every road that we had. And that was a problem up in Kings Canyon. We had a lot of bunching up of resources that caused some problems with egress. So by maintaining one lane, we were able to move around and get around a lot easier. Um, another thing that <clears throat> we did up in Lakeview that I didn't do the day before is I put more fire line supervision into this subdivision. When you have a spread out subdivision with narrow access and, and small roads, a di one division supervisor can't oversee all of that. So what I did is brought divisions down from a, some other divisions that didn't have a lot of resources, didn't have much activity, and brought them down to help with this uh, urban interface situation that we had, as well as I main, or, uh, utilized the uh, strike team and task force leaders heavily also. Basically, use them as, as segments within the, within the fire. So that really helped out. Um, what goes along with that is you need to further expand your communication plan though. Make sure that everybody understands who's talking to who, what frequency, frequencies are being utilized, and make sure everybody has a clear understanding of the communication plan. And then the last thing that I learned is we need to have a very diverse group of resources in an urban interface. We need a type one crew, which I had, which was able to do a lot of the clearing and firing out. I had type three engines that were mobile and were able to pick up hot spots. I had type one engines that were available to take on a structure if a structure did ignite. And I had bulldozers that were around prepping around structures as well as uh, helping to control the fire. And I think that diversity of, of resources is vital. Accountability is huge. Uh, you can't overestimate that. Uh, the circumstances that we were just in uh, here with the waterfall fire and the burnover, um, that was one of, uh, as, as the strike team leader in that particular instance, um, that was one of my major considerations was uh, the accountability. The uh, personnel accountability report was in fact, uh, I think, uh, spun out of uh, several tragic uh, firefighter losses within structural firefighting. Um, it's a, a very simple tool if, 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 if used appropriately and uh, implemented through policy that allows the person that's responsible for um, the individual component, whether it be a task force or a division or a group, or actually the entire incident, um, which uh, may have some limitations in terms of a wildland setting because you have so many in individuals generally involved, but it does allow them through proper procedure and through proper radio communications to request or call for PAR, I guess that's the, the, uh, the nomenclature that's used. And um, uh, if everyone is trained on it, they're aware of that procedure, when they hear that call for PAR, um, they do make their accountability known to their immediate supervisor 
and um, they are able to track resources and track personnel in particular uh, following that process.